Welcome, everybody, to the Creator Economy Podcast. We're going to be talking today about 41 big ideas that are going to change our world. Topics that range from the economy, artificial intelligence, work from home, content creation, different platforms, the zeitgeist, the culture. You don't want to miss this. This is going to be an amazing show. If you're a business owner, if you're a content creator, if you're a professional executive, somebody who's looking to advance your career, this is going to be the ultimate show for you, I believe, to prepare you for 2023. Make sure you come on back. We are live, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. I am your host, Professor Nez, content creator, business owner, speaker, author, but really I'm a creator at heart. Um, content has been the engine of all of my business. We're live on LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, and Instagram. I would implore Instagram to come on over to YouTube. Um, that way I can monitor the comments and monitor the chats. But this is a really, really interesting show. Come on in. Come on in. Replay viewers, podcast listeners. I'm excited to hear from you, too. And, and, and we're obviously, let me just give you a little bit of context. So good to see you, George. Good to see you, Ahmad. As you're coming in, please tap that thumbs up. I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. Um, here, let me, let me give you a little bit of context. LinkedIn has reached out to me because they wrote this amazing uh, article asking um, all of the top voices, business owners, creators, leaders, influencers, what are going to be. So it's a, kind of a global community. And they wanted all of these top voices and creators to share the big ideas they believe will define the year ahead. I'm going to screen share uh, right now so you can kind of see this, what I'm talking about. Um, and they reached out to me, uh, my creator manager, shout out to you, Cayman, reached out to me and said, hey, Nez, we'd, we'd love to get your opinion on this. Um, we'd love for you to share your kind of reaction to this. And they initially told me, hey, Nez, just kind of... Uh, you know, do maybe a short video or, you know, something that uh, speaks to one of the ideas, whether you agree or disagree. Good to see you over there. I think that's Tasha. Is that Tasha? Good to see you, girl, on Amazon. Come on over. Um, and, you know, I just thought, you know, if if you're you're telling me to react to this and give my response um, and you've culled together all of these amazing ideas that are going to, I mean, it's a pretty dramatic title, change our world in 2023, that I feel it's important to really address this and address this for all of us. Um, I can't think of anything more beneficial to any content creator, business owner, et cetera. It's all about anticipation. Everything is about anticipation, anticipating the trends, anticipating your audience, anticipating where the market is going. Anybody who's an early adopter in any capacity always wins. And so this is a very, very important show. But more important than my reaction, I want your reaction. I want to know what you guys think. So I want you to really, this is going to be highly, highly interactive. We're not going to go through all of the 41 ideas. I'll leave a link to the article in the description, um, but I will go through each one, but I'm only going to probably react because here's what I did. This is exactly what I did. Good to see you, Nano. Good to see you, Shark Fintech in the house. Come on in. This is what I did. This is exactly what I did. I haven't actually looked at this article in depth at all. So you and I, Nez Nation, are going to go through this together. We're going to go through this article together, and you're going to get actual, live, authentic, visceral reactions. Now, 
Nez, you put on your thumbnail, number 11 got you heated. So what are you talking about? Yes, I did put number 11 gets me super heated because that was, as I was skimming through this, that was the one that really, really got me heated. It's a topic that you guys know I've talked about a million times. Instagram, come on over to YouTube. I could really monitor your comments. Great to see you. Come on in. Join the Creator Economy podcast. Good to see you, Judy. Come on in. Um, yes, I did sort of skim through these. Um, but, uh, and so that number 11 stick to, I'm actually going to probably address number 11 first, but I want to go through this together, but more important than just my reaction as nation, I want your reaction. I want you to tell me what you think. I'm going to go through each one of these ideas, but I'm only going to talk about or speak to the ones that really, um, I don't know, ones that, that motivate me or inspire me to have something to say about this. But again, last thing, and then we're going to jump right into it. This is the biggest article of the year put out by probably the biggest website, business website on planet Earth, LinkedIn. 41 big ideas that will change our world in 2023. I'm curious, aren't you? So let's let's get cooking on this. Let's go look at um, some of these ideas together. Um, and again, I'll share the link um, of the article. I'll share the link of the article in the description. You could also just Google, you know, 41 Big Ideas LinkedIn. If you literally just Google 41 Big Ideas LinkedIn, you'll, you'll get the article, but I'll leave it in the description. Um, <clears throat> number one, hybrid work will be here to stay. You know what? I think that's definitely going to happen because it's employees, workers, the labor market demands it. And also, uh, I think it saves a lot of money, time and cost, even though people like Elon Musk and a lot of people, even Meta, I think, and Amazon are demanding RTO, return to office, uh, um, proclamations, I don't think hybrid work is going to go anywhere. Number two, companies will say farewell to expansive, sprawling headquarters. Yeah, I don't I don't see that. I, I agree with that. I, I think that's going to be, uh, again, every company, every business thinks about two things, cutting cost and increasing the bottom line. So these huge headquarters, these huge uh, office spaces that are thousands upon thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars to rent. Um, that's a huge cost for these companies. And the fact that most of these jobs can be done remotely should say something, should say something about all this. So I, I, I agree with number two, companies will say farewell to expansive uh, headquarters. It's a great article. They have all these um, kind of snippets, like you can see here, Erica James, the dean of the Wharton School, one of the biggest business schools in the world. You know what I think about business schools. We'll talk about that later. But she says, organizations will need to integrate preparedness into their bottom line. The pandemic left us with great uncertainty about our future, but it also established absolute clarity about one thing. Now, what's that, Erica? The unthinkable not only can, but does happen. How prepared companies are when the next crisis strikes will determine their viability, longevity, or ultimately their failure. Okay, hold on a second. So I want to say something here. The number one skill, okay, the, the, the number one skill in the creator economy, I've talked about this multiple times. Great to see you, Judy. The number one skill in the creator economy is not your video production, is not your technical hard skills, it's not your ability to come up with an amazing looking studio, it's not your amazing editing skills, it's not your amazing distribution and platform and processes. The number one skill every content creator, every business owner, every human being for that matter needs is adaptation. Because there is one thing that is capital C certain, okay? Let me know in the comments, too, what you think of some of these. There is one thing that is capital C certain, and that is this. 
Let me get a little bit of music here, some background music. Um, get just a little cool, some low music here. Okay. One thing that is absolutely capital C certain is there is no such thing as certainty. In life, in business, there's no such thing. COVID came like a Mack truck out of nowhere. Can you imagine being uh, you know, a small retail store that literally depends? And I started in retail. I helped my mom when I was 13 build a leather shoe business, just a small boutique in a small coastal town. She still actually has it, by the way. She's taught me everything I know about business. Um, I love you, mom. Um, and you know, uh, can you imagine being a retail store owner? Can you imagine being a casino operator during the pandemic where everything literally shut down? Yes, there were some great contingency plans and yes, the government helped, et cetera, et cetera, but nobody can really truly help you out of a hole that big. So adaptation, COVID is just a metaphor, just an example. Adaptation is literally everything. Your ability to have the navigational, have the foresight, have the skill set to look at a crisis. And instead of saying it's over, I failed because I can't do anything about this, saying, asking this question. Instead of saying, asking this question, I can't do anything. What am I going to do? The question should be, okay, how do we work around this? How do we solve this? I mean, that kind of mindset, just that simple shift of your mindset, I'm telling you right now, Nez Nation, it's an absolute game changer. Let me know in the comments right now if that makes any sense. Replay viewers, podcast listeners, I am monitoring. I am monitoring the comments. I am monitoring the chat. So let me know if that makes any sense and let me know what your opinions are on some of these uh, big ideas, okay? Number three, AI will gain multiple senses. What in the world does that mean? So in this article, they're saying AI will grow more intuitive and increasingly use multiple senses at once. Multimodal AI applications will allow AI systems to process audio, visual, language, data in combination with and in relation to each other. A tool like DALLE, which can generate original art based on text prompts. It's just an early example of this approach. So AI technology has really transformed the way people work and the way businesses operate. Um, I don't know that much about the tech. Uh, let's see what Paul Hennessy says, the CEO of Shutterstock. We are likely to see, this is from Paul, we're likely to see a rapid explosion of AI generated content as the technology becomes mainstream. Interesting. How can we responsibly commercialize creativity that hasn't wholly come from the creator themselves? These questions will come to head this year, 2023. Whoa, 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 whoa. What do you think of that? That's pretty interesting. My man, AL in the house, Anthony Luck. What's up, dog? Flora in the house. Good to see you, Lewis. Oh, thank you, Flora. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Shark Fin Tech says, there are always exceptions. I work in finance and the industry still needs big physical buildings, both for servers ah, and for front, middle, and back office support staff. I love that. Thank you, Shark Fin Tech. You see, this is why I said at the beginning of the show, these apparent ideas to change the world that are going to change the world in 2023. It's one thing that I give my impression, but see, when you come to a Nez Nation live stream, when you come to a Nez Nation live stream, you don't just get me who's been doing this for decades. You get all these amazing content creators, professionals, business owners. You get all these amazing people. Hey, good to see you, Annette. Annette is in the house. As you're coming in, I'd really appreciate it if you could tap that thumbs up. It takes you 0. 0.2 seconds. Won't hurt you. Um, and also, please share this out because y'all know sharing is caring. We're talking about the 41 big ideas that will change our world in 2023. LinkedIn reached out to me and said, can you please do a reaction to this article? Fantastic. I'm totally happy to do that. 
I want to know your reaction as well. Leave a comment. Hey, your review channel on Instagram. Great to see you. Come on over to YouTube um, and I can monitor your comments. I really appreciate you. Good to see you, your review channel. Okay, so that's interesting. I don't know that much about AI, but I have said this before and I'll say it again. I think Terminator is a nonfiction film. <laughs> I think the moment that artificial intelligence finally decides which it just seems if you're going to create artificial intelligence that is more lifelike, that is more human-like, that is actually able to execute creative projects, creativity is emotion. Emotion is a very human thing. It's a very flawed thing. As soon as the insight that artificial intelligence has that says, why am I even listening to you, human, Terminator is a nonfiction film. I probably won't be around uh, when that happens, but my kids and grandkids, it's a scary thought. And I, and I think it's real. I'm kind of joking, but it's kind of a scary thought. I'll be honest. Okay. Number four, the age of the tech CEO hero. I'm going to go through some of these pretty fast. The age of the tech CEO hero will come to an end. What do you guys think of that Nez nation? Yeah, I think tech founders, Travis Kalanick, Mark Musk, you know, I think tech founders did kind of have this rock star status when they first, you know, Steve Jobs, et cetera, et cetera, which probably I think, you know, uh, is just a product of the, the sort of culture, especially American culture. Um, but, you know, saying that that's coming to an end, I could really care less. Uh, I don't I don't really care. I love the products that they make. The products that they make allow me to conduct my business, allow me to create content, which I love more than anything. Even though I'm a business owner, I'm a creator at heart. Um, I love podcasting. I love doing this. I love going live. I love creating content more than anything. Um, I have a you know consulting agency. I have multiple streams of revenue. I have other businesses. As an Amazon influencer, I have my, our affiliate a business, but 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 you know nothing nothing gets me more excited than creating content, and so and so those awesome you know uh, leaders have created products and and software that allows me to do that. So I, I never put them on a pedestal. I just appreciate them. So I don't really care about that one. Okay, this one's interesting. Um, a global recession. A global recession, actually, let me uh, zoom out a little bit. I went too much on that one. A global recession is likely, but it won't last long. What do you guys think of that one? Number five. That, uh, I hope it doesn't last long because how many people right now, let me know in the chat. Hey, good to see you. Your review channel in the house. Who is that? Give me your first name. I'd love to know. Joseph. Okay. Is it Joseph? Is that who that is? Good to see you, Joseph. Come on in. Um, I don't know about you, but let me know in the comments how many people still are paying exorbitant amounts of money. Hey, hey, in the house. Good to see you. How many people are, if you're on Instagram, come on over to YouTube. It's the same, Professor Nez. Just go on your YouTube app. We're live on YouTube so I can monitor your comments. But great to see you. Um, you know, groceries, steak, meat, food, gas, um, electricity, all your bills. How many people are still experiencing some serious pain at the pump? Uh, you know, agreed with number five. Hopefully we get a soft landing shark fin tech. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> this is interesting. They're saying here that, um, the picture for 2023 has darkened concedes the world trade organization. The worst is yet to come. Um, but what they're saying is, and interest rates, holy mackerel. I mean, interest rates. Musk actually tweeted recently, Musk tweeted recently that if interest rates go up again, if Powell raises interest rates again, and, he, and, and the decision is supposed to come at the end of this month, December. We are recording this. We are live streaming this as of this recording, December 11th, 2022. And I'll tell you this, if those interest rates go up and must confirm this, it's going to create an economic downfall like we haven't seen in a long time. So I think they're going to put the brakes 
I think they're going to put the brakes on uh, raising interest rates uh, so dramatically. They probably still will to curb spending, but we'll, we'll see what happens. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Replay viewers, live viewers, podcast. Dan Schulman, who's the president and CEO of PayPal, says this. As the cost of energy, gas, food, and rent rise, consumers will continue to reduce discretionary spending. While businesses can't control inflation, they can help people to earn, spend, and save better. Internally, companies need to look for new ways to expand employee benefits and evaluate compensation. That is the president and CEO of PayPal. So they've really called, you can see here, this article, and I'm happy to respond to this, and I love your reactions too. They've really culled from different um, leaders and different you know, thought leaders, influencers, creators, business owners, CEOs, et cetera, et cetera. And so, um, you know, Dan Schulman is nobody to scoff at or laugh at. And if he's saying that, you know, consumers will continue to reduce discretionary spending, which basically means anything that's not necessary, um, that could have a, a serious problem, you know, and maybe that will curb inflation. We don't know. Um, Sharkfin says the Fed is likely to raise again this week. Is it this week? But only 0.25. Yeah, I hope so. I hope that's right. Tony says... There are houses for rent in my state that are 8K a month. Holy macadamia nut. Oh, by the way, thank you for sharing that, AL. And we've seen rent uh, increase, you know, across the board here in California, too. Um, condos are like 6,000 a month. It's insane. Um, I'm going to take your questions, too. So we're going to go through. I'm not going to go through all 41, obviously, but, but I'm going to go through some that really strike me as interesting, intriguing, and a premise for conversation. But I want to take your questions too. As we always do, we go live every single Sunday, every single week. Sometimes we do impromptu prime time, which is why the pin comment and in the show notes, I want you to become an insider. Go to professornez.com forward slash insight. It's our free creator economy newsletter. So you never miss out ever on all the latest, greatest, new, updated news and info, helping you to monetize, earn real serious income in the creator economy. So make sure you do that, okay? This is no coconuts and yachts, all right? This is no get-rich-quick scheme. We talk about everything legit and backed by evidence and very practical. Brian, in the house. How are you, sir? No problem. Make sure you tap that thumbs up. Thank you, Shark Fintech. Make sure you tag me on Twitter. Yes, Nano, put a Q in front of your question. Thank you, sir. Really appreciate that. Okay, number six, in-person and online retail will tie the knot. I disagree. Um, I don't think in-person and online retail will tie the knot. I truly believe that e-commerce, it already has. I think e-commerce is taking over and will continue to take over. Um, the data backs that up. Number seven, cities will feed themselves. Okay, that's a number. That's number seven. Number eight, crypto facing a trust crisis will confront its biggest hurdle: widespread adoption. Okay. I was one of those dudes who was really intrigued. I'll be honest with you in a very naive way. I was very intrigued. I bought a couple NFTs. Um, I do believe that blockchain technology is the future. Um, I do have some questions. I do have some skepticism, but what happened with SBF, what happened with Sam Bankman Fried? Sam, what is, what's his name? Friedman, Sam Friedman, the CEO, whatever you see his picture all over Twitter. You see him everywhere. Crypto was kind of, uh, um, you know, crypto was kind of on alert anyway. Crypto was kind of being, you know, scrutinized heavily, right? You've got people like Jamie Dimon, the CEO of Chase saying, you know, I, I would never buy Bitcoin. I don't believe in digital uh, uh, wallets or digital uh, cryptocurrencies. Um, and then, you know, you have a lot of people who were very excited about NFTs and then NFTs crashed. People lost a lot of money. Um, <laughs> Brian, 
Brian says, I was promised coconuts and yachts. Where's my co coming right up, sir? <laughs> I'll get that right over to you, brother. <laughs> it's in the mail, my friend. It's in the mail. Mr. Skydweller, long time no see. Good to see you, sir. Or madam. I, I can't remember. I apologize. My, my memory's a little froggy. This one I actually agree with. I think with the dramatic, you can see there in blue, the dramatic failure and the collapse of FTX and the fact that people didn't just lose thousands. People didn't just lose millions. People lost billions of dollars out of thin air. And this guy's not facing any repercussions is I think going to set back crypto for a long, long time, maybe even decades. I think the adoption of crypto was already facing extreme scrutiny. This, I think, just set back crypto for a very, very long time. Let me know what you guys think. If you're just joining us, LinkedIn released their end of year article where editors asked top voices, creators, business owners, economic experts, operators, CEOs, people like myself as well. What do you think are the big ideas that are going to change the world in 2023? And we are going through that very article. You're getting my reaction, but what is more important, I want your reaction. If you're watching on Instagram, come on over to YouTube. I'm monitoring the comments. Good to see you. LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, Twitter. Leave a comment. What do you think of some of these ideas? I think crypto is in trouble. I really do. Number nine, healthcare worker shortage will grow and will turn to tech for help. Yeah, I actually have a lot of clients in telehealth. Um, I have a lot of clients who are in the healthcare space and a lot of automation is coming, y'all. So your creativity is going to be the difference. Automation is coming. It's taking over every single sector. Indra Nui, the former CEO and chair of Pepsi says, we saw it during the pandemic, and now we mustn't forget it. The U.S. care economy needs an overhaul. What vertical doesn't need an overhaul? Um, from better quality, affordable child care to a grand plan for how we support the demographic bulge of old people in coming decades. COVID-19 opened the door to this discussion. It's time to walk through it. That is Indra Nui, the former CEO and chair of Pepsi Coca-Cola. I mean, one of the biggest companies of all time. Very interesting. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Okay. Are we coming up on number 11, which I'm going to really talk about? Um, Shark Fin Tech says, crypto is still too volatile and risky. Yeah. I love the way you said that. There's still no unique case, use case for blockchain. Interesting. The thing that I like about blockchain technology, uh, Shark Fin, is it kind of gets rid of that um, there's more transparency. And I like the idea of decentralization. I like the idea of a public ledger. Um, again, and, I, and I, I can't speak too much on this because I just don't know that much about it. But it's super, super interesting. If you're on Instagram, come on over to YouTube at Professor Nez. I'd love to see you so I can monitor your comments. Brandon Sang, good to see you. I hope I'm saying that right. Brandon says, I lost $60. From crypto, it's the last thing I would ever invest in. Crypto or digital money is a gimmicky joke. Interesting. I think quantum computing, AI, and autonomous machines are the big three. Thank you, Brandon. I really appreciate that. My man, the myth. Oh, my God. Everybody stop what you're doing because I'm about to ruin the image and the style that you used to. Sorry, I had to do that. Um, flash in your pan, Ed, Dr. Ed Mavin. It's the doctor. Flash, I miss you, man. Where have you been, brother man? It's so good to see you. Everybody give a huge warm welcome to Dr. Ed Marvin, Flash Fam. Hashtag, everybody put a hashtag Flash Fam in the comments. Hashtag Flash Fam for life. Flash says they will make the ownership of gold illegal again. Oh, no, we don't want that. AL says he's watching and playing with his mom's dog. Fantastic. I love dogs. You guys have seen me on my walks with Blue all the time. I made over a thousand on crypto, says Flash, with only a two hundred investment. Wow, nice Flash. Unpack that if you will. That's fantastic. 
We'll focus to number 10, big idea that will change the world in 2023. We'll focus on when just as much as where we work. Increased attention around the four-day work week in 2022. Encourage workers and managers alike to rethink how we work. I agree with this. Um, I truly believe that I think there's even statistics. I'd love your thoughts on this, Nez Nation. I think there's even statistics that prove this. Um, that, you know, 85% of work done, you know, per week is, I mean, 80% of employees don't literally just try to waste time or, or do random things to, to, to take up the time that they're at work. So I truly believe, I truly believe that the, the whole process, this is a great idea. I think this is an idea that will, that will come to fruition, that changing the concept of the work week, changing the concept of how often we work, when we work, et cetera, et cetera. I truly believe that will happen because productivity, efficiency, lean management is absolutely essential. And most people, okay, um, you see that stat right there. Flexible schedules can boost employee productivity by nearly 30%. Most people, when they're at work, they do nothing more than 50% of the time because the hours, the, the demands are pretty ridiculous. Most people can get their work done in a very short amount of time. And so the rest of the time, they're just twiddling their thumbs or they're on TikTok. <laughs> Who's on TikTok? Give me a hashtag me in the comments. Shorts revenue sharing is coming, y'all. It's going to be really interesting. Okay, Ariana Huffington, who I'm not the hugest fan of, says quiet quitting is a response to a very real problem. Yeah, this whole quiet quitting thing is kind of ridiculous. Um, the global epidemic of stress and burnout, but it's not a solution. We can both be engaged by our work and not burn out. Yeah, I agree with that. Okay, here's number 11. This is the one that I put in my thumbnail... Okay, that really gets me heated. Number 11 gets me heated. Who's that handsome man on that thumbnail? <laughs> but uh, this is, this is, um, hey, thank you so much, Anthony. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Um, 11, the school to work path will be turned on its head. It's about time. You know, when I was young, um, you know, it wasn't, you know, about your ingenuity. It wasn't about your creativity. It wasn't about innovation. It was really about where did you, what's your degree and where did you go to school? Degrees were everything. And then we found out that most of the stuff we learned in school, okay, most of it, probably 99% of it, had absolutely nothing to do with the real world. And that you had tenured professors who rested on their laurels and rested on the security blanket of tenure. There was zero incentive. I mean, it's exact opposite of the free market. Like if you're not innovative, if you're not competitive, if you're not providing value, the economy, the market will absolutely throw you out like yesterday's garbage. Okay, they will go find somewhere else. They, if you don't have a quality product or service, they will go somewhere else and you will be out of business. You will be pink slipped faster than you can say, check, please. Okay. The university system is the exact opposite. You write a bunch of books that mean absolutely nothing to normal people, scholarly journals and textbooks. Okay that are written in such a way that if you don't understand, um, you know, if you don't, have you ever memorized the thesaurus, you're never going to understand it. Even then it doesn't even help. Um, it's so unclear. It's so unconcise. It's just absolute dribble. And you publish a bunch of those and then they go, Hey, we're going to make you tenure. And then basically you can teach whatever you want. You have job security for the rest of your life. Um, and you don't have to innovate. You can literally get away with anything you want. I had a tenured professor in graduate school. I've got three degrees. I could throw them all in the wastebasket because literally that's where they belong. I had, a, I, I had a professor in graduate school who literally came to class, talked for 10 minutes, 
and then left because he was tired. He dismissed class after 10 minutes. I actually, you know, at the time was kind of like, okay, cool, whatever. But now that I look back on it, it's like, wait a minute, I'm paying really good money. And this was a really prestigious, highly esteemed university, private university. Um, to say that I was upset um, really is an understatement. It doesn't even cover it. I, uh, you know, decided I wanted to be a professor that I, because I actually liked teaching and this, I, I believed in it. I wanted to be that professor that I saw in Dead Poet Society. I wanted to be that professor that inspired, that didn't just do orthodox, traditional, by the book teaching methodologies. And I was kind of doing really well. I was kind of creating an impact. The money was garbage, right? But but I was doing really, really well. I was an adjunct professor. I wasn't a tenure professor. Then I had a student come up to me. A lot of you guys have heard this. Um, a lot of you guys have heard this story before, but just really quickly. Then I had a student come up to me because it relates to what we're talking about today. I had a student come up to me and say, Professor Nez, I just spent $100,000 on a piece of paper. They walked into my office after they graduated. It was six months to a year after they graduated. They were a student of mine. I'll never forget uh, uh, you know, this moment. She said, Professor Nez, I just paid $100,000 for a piece of paper and nobody will hire me. And I knew why nobody would hire her. Um, it broke my heart, to say the least. And that was when I decided to start this channel that you're watching right now, the Professor Nez channel on YouTube. And I said, I'm going to give it all away for free. I'm going to speak about all the real, practical, applicable things that relate to your life, how you can be a better human being, how you can communicate your story effectively, how you can discover your purpose, how you can make more money and sustain yourself. I'm going to give it all away for free. I've got over like 500, 600 videos on this channel alone, the Professor Nez channel. I'm not bragging. There's plenty of people who've got thousands and thousands of videos. But what I'm saying is, is school is the university system, especially higher education. But let me take that back. Even school, because I, I see what my kids are being taught in supposedly good schools. That's why we moved here has nothing to do with the real world. Look at this comment from Brandon. Thank you so much for being here, Brandon. Brandon says, I'm a computer science degree in my four years is completely outdated compared to the modern industry. The computer science education is compared to the education in 1960s and 1980s. I'm a computer science student in my third year. I had not learned that much that is applicable to the real world. That's exactly why I did this, Brandon. I can't tell you how much I appreciate that. And that's exactly right, Tony. Anthony, thank you so much. Most schools don't even care about you after you're done. And case in point, um, I don't know if I should do this, so I'm kind of nervous, but I'm going to call him out right now. President Jim Doty, if you're watching this or anybody knows him, tag him. I sent you an email, a heartfelt email. Check out this response. I've never done this before. This is, this is absolutely huge. I've never, ever called out anybody, but I told you, I meant what I said. This gets me so heated. This, this topic gets me absolutely heated more than anything. I spent a lot of money on my graduate degree and I wasn't getting any teaching gigs. I wasn't getting any gigs at all. Granted, there was a financial situation with the economy, to put it mildly. This is around 2009, 2008. Um, I sent him a very heartfelt email. This is the president of the university, a guy who has a lot of power. He could have easily said, what department are you from? I'll get you a teaching gig right now. You can teach in our... A business department, our writing department, our English department, our social science, our humanities department. This is what he said to me. I sent him a heartfelt email saying, Mr. President, I'm begging you. I'm desperate. I have a, a wife I'm about to marry. I'm, I'm going to about to have a family. I can't get a gig. This is when I left the business world and I was kind of trying to go into the public sector. He wrote two lines, two lines in response. Buck up. Keep your head up. Things will change. That was it. And he sent that to me. That was his response. 
I dedicated thousands of dollars to his university. I dedicated time, energy, and belief and trust. And his only response was, buck up, keep your head up, things will change. That's literally all he said. So if you're, if you're wondering why I have a gripe with universities, that is why. Um, and I've never been happier in my life being a full-time content creator, uh, having multiple businesses, multiple six-figure revenue streams. Um, it is the best feeling on planet Earth because it's the free market. I'm able to do something I love. Um, I no longer have to have anybody tell me that I can't teach that. You can't talk about that. That's too this. That's too risque. And I can actually be judged by the true jury, the free market. There is nothing more powerful than that. And I want that for everybody watching and listening to this. So yeah, I could say I agree with number 11 wholeheartedly. Over the last two years, higher education has lost nearly 1.4 million students um, since the 1980s. The immediate college enrollment rate has been steadily rising, but over the last two years, they lost 1.4 million. And community colleges, long seen as the fastest pathway into the workforce, have welcomed many fewer high school graduates in the last decade. Georgia Lorenz, the president at Seminole State College in Florida, says colleges are just competing with each other for students. They're not just competing with each other for students. They're competing with Amazon, Walmart, and even employers that have long required a college degree. Yeah, a lot of uh, companies have dropped degree requirements too, and as they should, as they should. And this is my favorite part of this. Um, the skills needed to keep up in any job are churning at a faster pace. So what uh, Brandon was saying is absolutely true. And yeah, Flash, you know, um, it's a really good point, Flash, what you make there. Um, Sharkfin says, my university still has the gall to solicit me for donations, though decades after I graduate. I, me too. I always throw it in the garbage. Me too. And this is a, a, a multi-million dollar private school. Me too, brother. They do the same thing to me. It's It's preposterous. It's absolutely preposterous. The economy moves at breakneck speed. The market moves like this. School is still operating at a snail pace. I'm hoping to God, COVID really exposed them for their lack of innovation. I'm hoping to God that universities finally go bankrupt. It is the biggest Ponzi scheme in the history of America. Education should be a billion percent free, funded by taxpayer dollar, bear dollars. Anybody who wants it, that's great, fantastic. And there should be stipulations. There should be parameters and there should be milestones that every professor needs to reach. They need to be, they are not held accountable for producing any results. They're not held accountable for producing actual real world practical results, like helping people get work, helping people do what they love, helping people feel fulfilled in their personal and professional lives. They're not held accountable. So that needs to change immediately. Okay. I could talk about this for decades. We're not going to do that. Okay. We're just not going to do that. So we're going to continue on. Please, if you haven't already, make sure that you please tap that thumbs up. And share this out. Tag me on Twitter. Share it on your community tab. Share it on LinkedIn. Share it on Facebook. Share it everywhere. I would really, really appreciate it because y'all know sharing is caring. Yes. Yes, absolutely. And, and that's that's what we covered in a previous live stream. Yeah, Mr. Beast is actually partnering with East North Carolina University. And this, I hope picks up like wildfire. I hope it spreads like wildfire. Uh, we talked about that on a previous stream. If you haven't seen that, uh, maybe one of my moderators can leave a link in the chat or just go to YouTube, uh, our YouTube channel, and you'll see it there in the playlist for um, live streams. 
the number 12 idea that will change our world in 2023, according to the top voices, leaders that LinkedIn editors have asked is we'll turn to the C to power our electronics. There's no clean energy revolution without minerals. Interesting. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on that. Um, yeah, clean energy, renewable energy is really interesting. Number 13, lab-based meat will hit more plates. That sounds awful. That sounds awful. I'm not a fan of this. Let me know what you think in the comments. Number 14, the U.S. will become a nation of renters and landlords. Yeah, well, if you have mortgage rates, you know, in the, you know, double digits, um, absolutely. Who's going to be able to qualify for that? I mean, your house payment, your mortgage payment is just tripling, you know, with these, with these interest rates. Um, I'm lucky that we bought our home, you know, long ago and we, we still have a decent, uh, uh, interest rate, a mortgage rate that absolutely, uh, uh, is an interesting, is an interesting point. And who knows, maybe renting is, if you don't have a family and you don't have, you know, kids and you don't have, I mean, if you're, if you're single or just with your, your partner, wife, spouse, whatever, husband, whatever, um, maybe renting is the way to go. I don't know. I mean, there's less, being a homeowner is extremely stressful. It is. I have termites now. I, I might have to get our house, uh, tented. We found a couple of droppings, my windowsill. It sucks. I mean, we had leaks. We've had, I mean, uh, you know, so many issues. I can't even tell you with our lawn. <clears throat> I mean, I agree with Flash. Sometimes renting is better than owning. So who knows? I don't think this is a bad thing. But I do feel sorry for new first time homeowners, first time home buyers, because the interest rates are out of control. Your mortgage rates are out of control. <clears throat> Excuse me. Tony says, I once heard that the math program at Weaver State has a goal of getting their students to fail so they could get more money. Oh, I hope that's not true, but it wouldn't surprise me. So yeah, I do think number 14, <clears throat> I think that could come to fruition. Uh, number 15, philanthropists will demand less and trust more. Who cares? I don't care about that. Philanthropists will trust more. Who cares? Um, Nita Farane, I don't know how I'm saying that, is a professor of law and philosophy at Duke University, author of Battle for Your Brain. In 2023, we will begin the transition away from the mouse and keyboard to wearable brain computer interface devices in earbuds, VR headsets, and even small tattoos. Our brains will soon become the universal controller for the rest of our technology. We will also, let me hold on a second. I got to plug in my phone here. It's running out of power. Sorry about that. Um, we will also need to define who can access and use our brain data through a new right to cognitive liberty. I followed the first part. The second part makes zero sense to me. I do think VR Thank you so much, Nano. You're the ultimate mod. I appreciate you, sir. Thank you so much. Nano, I want to give a big shout out to Nano. Nano is the ultimate mod, the Nez Nation mod king. My man, Luis, uh, Nano, nicknamed Nano, has been with me since the Periscope days, way before Facebook Live, YouTube Live, Instagram Live, way before any of these platforms were really anything. So OG, Nano, I want to give you a big shout out. Sharkfin says impossible burgers are good, but only when bought in supermarket cooked on a grill. I don't trust that stuff. I just, I don't like it. Don't mess with my food. I mean, I, I, I think if you just eat not processed food and eat real food, vegetables, uh, I love red meat. I love burgers. I love steak. And we try to do the non-hormone route or whatever you want to call it the non-processed route. And I think that's just fine. Gary in the house on LinkedIn. Good to see you, sir. Make sure you tap that thumbs up. Let me know where you're joining from too, because I love hearing from you guys. Replay viewers, live viewers. Let me know where you're joining from. What city, what state, what country. I love it. We have an international audience here. I do think that VR and I do think the metaverse it's going to happen. It didn't quite happen the way Zuckerberg maybe planned, but I do think uh, it's it's going to happen. A lot of people say it's already here. 
Number 16, I love this. You want to talk about a rebuke to the scam of, of higher education. Number 16, the side hustle will reign supreme. The gig economy has boomed over the past year, and it shows no signs of slowing. By the way, this is the first time I'm reading this, guys. I have not prepared for this show. Um, LinkedIn reached out to me, said, Nez, we'd love it if you could do a you know reaction to this. Um, and I said, I, I absolutely have no problem doing that. You guys know, number 16, this is what we talk about here on the Creator Economy podcast. We talk about monetizing in the creator economy. We talk about creating you know, monetizable income streams from your content, from your expertise, from your creativity, from your skill set. I couldn't agree with number 16 more. San Bernardino in the house. Boston, Mass. I don't think I ever knew that, Nano. You're living in Boston, Mass. Well, yeah, I do because I sent you a camera and I also sent you a uh, a hoodie. Are you wearing that hoodie, Nano? I hope you are. Or was it a hat? I can't remember what you won on the last live stream. Which is why, guys, you all should become an insider. Because Santa Nez is on his way. We're going to do some live stream giveaways before Christmas. So you better subscribe to ProfessorNez.com forward slash insider. It's absolutely free. It's our creator economy. Link in our bio on Instagram. It is our absolute free creator economy newsletter where you won't miss out on anything, anything on how to monetize your skills, creativity, and experience in the creator economy. Go to professornez.com forward slash insider link in the pin comment and in the description. So yeah, I could not agree uh, more with this. 25% of Gen Z say they have a side gig. Wow. Compared with 16% of other ages, the 20 somethings are vocal about want, not wanting to be defined by a single professional identity. And as a money motivated generation, Interesting. I love this. Co-founder and CEO of Oak North Bank, Rishi, says a new form of entrepreneurship will emerge more diverse, more socially minded, and not afraid to multi-hustle, which is what I do every day. Everywhere I look, I see a new generation of founders building new businesses. In 2023, it's the entrepreneurs, the non-conformists, unafraid to try something new. I love this. And look, he even he even brings up my notion of adaptation. Look at this. Hey, Resume Workshop, good to see you. Come on over to YouTube so I can monitor your comments. Who will best adapt and overcome the inevitable challenges that will arise? Fantastic. Flash, I could not agree more. Flash says everybody needs a side hustle right now. It's never been more abundant. It's never been more abundant. I wish to God that I had these opportunities that y'all have back when I first started. NJ in the house, Jersey boy. Love it. Good to see you, Shark. Big shout out to Shark Finn. Um, when I first started running online businesses, we didn't have these kind of opportunities. Not even close. And guys... This is just the beginning. The creator economy is getting absolutely bigger and bigger and bigger. And the gig economy is ensconced within that. Thank you, Resume Workshop. I hope to see you there soon. Nano says, yes, he won the camera ZV1 valued at $900. You won a cup and you won the Nez Nation hoodie. Or was it the StreamYard hoodie? I can't remember. $900 camera. Congratulations to you, Nano. Could not have gone to a more deserving member of the Nez Nation fam. So good to see you. Welcome. If you're just joining us, we're talking about the 41 big ideas that LinkedIn just released. They asked all the biggest voices, top voices, creators, owners, business owners, professionals, what are the big ideas that are going to change the world in 2023? Yes, Resume Workshop is a New Jersey girl. Hello. Good to see you, girl. Number 17, VCs will stop hunting unicorns and start searching for workhorses. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Venture capitalists investing, they're, they're not going to be looking for that one in a million. They're going to be looking for tried and true. I believe that. Number 18, our old clothes will become big business. I think with Amazon Live and now Walmart is introducing a creator program, I think live stream shopping is huge. Um, these guys are saying for number 18, over the past two years, the fashion resale market has tripled in value to about $120 billion worldwide. Wow. Resale platforms such as Poshmark, The Real Real, and Vestiaire Collective and peer-to-peer -peer players, including, of course, eBay, Depop, and 3 up currently dominate online secondhand fashion. But in 2023, we will see more fashion brands try to bring those profitable sales in house by launching their own trade-in and resale efforts. So this is really, really interesting. This enables a unique loop of customer royalty, relationship building, and quality assurance, all while keeping quality items in use. Interesting. So that's that's pretty interesting. I mean, another opportunity. Another opportunity. Yes, thank you, Resume Workshop. I appreciate that. 19, cities will turn themselves into urban reserves to limit mass tourism. Let me know what you think about that one. Sharkfin, Sharkfin says, Nano wins everything. He should be in the Guinness Book for luckiest giveaway. Does he win in other streams all the time too? Nano, you're the man. Flash says, I have a Nez Nation t-shirt. That's right. And I have a Flash Fam t-shirt. If you come on back, Flash, I'll wear it on the next stream for the love of God. You got to be here, Flash. <laughs> I do. I do have a Flash Fam t-shirt. Um. 75% global air travel has rebounded. Okay. Let me know what you think of this one in the comments. Replay viewers, live viewers, number 20, and we'll think twice about traveling anyway. Whenever I see those TikToks of airline mayhem, it makes me never want to take an airplane again. That's, that's for sure. Number 21, social media users will turn their back on the algorithm. Okay, this is the first time I'm seeing this. Turned off by the trolls. And I want to, I really want to know your thoughts on this. Um, because algorithm to me is just the audience. The algorithm follows viewer behavior, audience behavior. Turned off by the trolls and burnt out by the pressure of chasing likes, consumers began to reconsider their relationships with big social networks in 2022. Okay, I'm listening a growing share of users will turn to smaller platforms in 2023. I don't know about that. Sites like Discord, Mastodon, okay, emphasize community building. I like Discord. We have an Nation Discord. A search for a safe spaces and nostalgia for the internet of the early 2000s when the word algorithm wasn't a part of everyone's vocabulary has fueled interest says social media consultant Matt Navarra. People now know the risks and dangers of algorithms. Is that the guy who came up with that stupid documentary on social media as the devil or something? I can't stand that guy. Um, they can't really escape them through traditional. I, I really want to say I disagree with this. Uh, I think you find your community, but if you want to make money as a content creator... Um, you have to be a part of Instagram, YouTube. You have to be a part of these platforms. You have to. Um, we won't see a mass exodus from the big social players in 2023, but in 12 months' time, the social media landscape will look very different as users seek out safer, more welcoming communities. In 2023, says Daniel Lubetsky, founder Kind, corporations must play a leading role in overcoming the division that has polarized our world. Uh, yeah, I don't know if that's your responsibility. I think people can think for themselves and they should cultivate critical thinking and discernment. Instead of trying to interfere, why don't you allow people to think for themselves? In a free economy of ideas, which is what I love. Okay, I need to say something right now. Nez is going to rant for a sec. Um. First of all, what I, I, I actually love what Elon Musk is doing with Twitter. I actually love it. 
in a free market economy of ideas, you are allowed to say this major world event didn't occur. I can't say it because I'll get demonetized. Or you can say this did occur. Okay. Let's say a major historical event. You probably know what I'm referring to. You can infer it doesn't mean that it's going to lead to division and hate. It's not any different than the real world. Okay. Yeah. You can't go scream fire in a crowded theater um, because that's not what we're talking about here. That's not freedom of speech, but the beautiful thing about the second amendment, the beautiful thing is, is that you as a citizen of this amazing country, which was endowed by our forefathers you have the opportunity to throw in your two cents, no matter how asinine your opinion is. And the cream will always rise to the top if you allow the free market of ideas to discern, to assess, to analyze. The cream always rise, rises to the top. One thing I know for absolute certainty is that censorship doesn't work. You cannot censor an idea just because you don't like it. That doesn't, to me, ring truthful, honest, transparent. More importantly, it's not American. And so the free economy of ideas, this, this, this kind of makes me think a little bit of um, a little too much interference. It did. Hey, good to see you. Believe in yourself in the house. Great to see you. <laughs> Uh, Flash says they don't cultivate free thinking. They cultivate do as you're told. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Uh, believe in yourself says when Elon defended himself, um, it made my heart sing. Yeah, absolutely. Elon is the man. He, I, I think, I think he's doing it in a way that maybe is not the most effective, but I, I mean, I certainly probably wouldn't do it that way, but I love it. I love his panache. I love his, his, his courage. And I, and I, and I, and I love his take no prisoners attitude. I love that. And what he's doing with Twitter files, releasing all of these internal emails and documents. And the fact that none of the major networks are covering it is shocking to say the least. It's shocking to say the least. Okay. If you're just joining us, LinkedIn has put out a new article called the 41 big ideas that are going to change our world in 2023 asking all of the top voices creators they reached out to me and said hey would you would you respond to this and this is our reaction but more important than my reaction i want to hear from you what do you think of these ideas replay uh viewers listeners podcast listeners i respond to all the comments personally let me know okay moving on number 23 the metaverse revolution will go professional 2022 wasn't a good year for the metaverse. Two of the most prominent metaverse platforms, Decentraland and Sandbox, with valuations of over a billion, were revealed to have under 1,000 daily active users. And Meta's Horizon World was so unpopular that even staff had to be pressured to use it. AR and VR remain in their infancy. And while a handful of people might be snapping up virtual condos, this branch of the tech world is a long way away from mainstream adoption. I agree with that. Um, but in 2023, we will see the metaverse take off in the professional world. The metaverse is not just flying around like Mario Kart, um, says Anthony Day, a tech consultant and Web3 advocate. VR and AR being used right now to train pilots and surgeons, which I love. And during the pandemic, automakers began to embrace this tech to design new vehicles. Expect employers, I don't know about universities, um, they're, pretty, they're pretty flimsy when it comes to uh, innovation, to embrace this tech to design new vehicles. Um, this is happening now, says Day. That is a commercially valuable, technically viable, and user experience feasible use case of the metaverse, but nobody talks about it. That's interesting. Um, Peter Shalom, global head, preclinical, clinical, and medical affairs for MedTech at Johnson & Johnson says, just as we surround pilots with data to safely fly planes, we now have the ability to create a digital surgery ecosystem with medical technology 
to help surgeons deliver better outcomes for patients. The expansion of this tech in 2023 will augment surgeons' skills, judgment, offering incredible health benefit to patients. I love this. I absolutely love this. Yeah, see, this is what I love about this. Um, Sharkfin says he does not, he thinks Musk is a crook and a fascist. No need to apologize, brother. I love you no matter what, Shark. This is the beautiful thing about a free country. We can agree to disagree. I don't care where you stand on certain issues. If you're a good person, this is how we cultivate communication. This is how we cultivate interactivity. I love that you disagree with me. That's totally fine. And who knows, maybe one day I would love this. We could grab a beer or a coffee and talk about it. But guess what? I love Shark Fin. I don't just hang, I don't think we should hang around with people who just agree with us. We should always have dissenting points of view because they allow us to grow and they allow us to rethink and they allow us to strengthen our critical thinking skills. I love you, Sharkfin. Thank you for saying that. Believe in Yourself says, it is important to remember... Oh, okay, you're still talking about uh, Musk. Okay, that's fantastic. Not, not a problem at all. I thought we we're talking about uh, Metaverse. Yeah, I, I think this is a great idea, and I think this is really, really interesting. Let me know in the replay. Let me know in the comments what you think of that. 23 luxury firms will court the VIC. Uh, okay, let's move on. Money will rush into women's sports. Interesting. Number 24. Uh, let me know what you think about that one. I don't really have anything to say on that. Um, I think we should have equality. I think, um, you know, it shouldn't be about women or men. It shouldn't be about black or white. It should be about, are you good at what you do? Are you a hard worker? Are you decent? And do you produce quality? End of story. We will extract carbon dioxide number 25 from the air by just doing what we're doing. I love that. Any technology that helps us get, um, any type of technology that gets us further is, is in any kind of health longevity sense I'm for. What is this? 26 Neanderthals and other ancient human relatives will change how we think about medicine. <whistles> that sounds really interesting. Let me know what you think about that. Number 27 will witness the first ransomware war. This is huge. Yeah, this is absolutely huge. I think ransomware and cybersecurity is, this actually, I believe, will happen. Um, ransomware gangs in countries such as Russia and Iran are increasingly willing to serve their embattled in governments. When Russia invaded Ukraine, one of the most damaging groups, Conti, announced its full support of the Russian government and promised to use its full capacity to deliver, excuse me, retaliatory measures against Western warmongers. Interesting. Yeah, the uh, the digital the digital wars. Yeah, the digital wars between countries is something really really important. Number twenty eight. Taxis will take to the skies for the wealthy. Who cares? I don't know about that. Twenty nine. Schools will go big on tutoring to make up for pandemic losses. They should because they did atrocious. Uh, number 30, companies will hold on to workers, downturn or no. I don't know if I agree with that. I doubt it. Um, okay. Cities will turn to new and very old tech to beat the heat. Um, okay. If that works. Number 32, the working class will head for higher ground. Um, I don't know about that. We'll be wearing mushrooms and seaweed. Number 33. Some of these are kind of be a little bit uh, preposterous, to say the least. Um, I want to kind of focus on the ones that really relate to what we're doing here in the greater economy. And so I don't, I don't know if I, I don't know if I believe that. Okay, hold on a second here. Let me see. Let me get my mic here. Okay, having a little problem with my pop filter. Give me one second. This is why I need some help. I need some help. I need some studio techs. <laughs> okay. Uh, here we go. So, yeah. So, I'm just kind of going through these pretty fast. Just because some of these really, uh, uh, you know, I've kind of talked about some of the ones that really 
um, I think pertain to what we do here at the Creator Economy Podcast. Um, let's see. Believe in yourself. I performed that surgery on my Twitter account, removing anything that didn't mesh. <laughs> I love that. That's good. Good for you, believe in yourself. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. By the way, get your questions ready because I'm going to answer any questions that you have. Um, number 35, our finances will become boring and that's a good thing. Interesting. Number 36, we'll learn to hang out at work without the office. Some of these ideas really have no, um, I don't really have any interest in them at all. The labor movement will surge and employers will fight back. That's been going on forever. That's been going on for decades. Um, number 38, menopause will become big business. Michelle Obama is talking about it. Actors Courtney Cox and Naomi Watts have been vocal about their experiences with it. That's right. Menopause is going mainstream, completely out of my domain. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Number 39, mental health checkups will become the new annual physical. I hope so. The mental health crisis is real. I actually, let me talk about this for a second. I actually hope so because the stigma of mental health uh, needs to go. Um, as somebody you guys know, who talks about burnout, who talks about anxiety, who talks about, give me one second. This is just annoying me now. As somebody who uh, faced debilitating anxiety as a young man, okay? Somebody who, you know, from pretty much the ages of 18 to 29, experienced um harrowing anxiety panic attack etc um this is a topic that really really means a lot to me i actually was super afraid when i was 19 years old you want to talk about the stigma of mental health i actually don't think i've ever shared this before i'd love your thoughts on this i actually pretended that i had a flu i made a doctor's appointment because I just didn't know where else to turn. I didn't even tell my parents because I knew my parents wouldn't understand. <clears throat> I thought I was losing my mind. I thought I was literally losing my mind. And I made a pretend appointment with the doctor because I was so embarrassed. I didn't know what to say. Like, Because they always ask that question when you make a doctor's appointment. What's this regarding? Am I going to say, well, I think I'm going crazy. What? <laughs> I don't know. I can't. I don't feel good in my own skin. I feel, uh, you know, anxious. I feel nervous. I feel panicky all the time. I, there, what is I, I didn't know how to communicate that. And so I said, oh, I, I'm just not feeling good. I think I have a, a weird thing in my cough or I have a sore throat. So I said something, I can't remember exactly what I said. So when I got into the doctor's office, I told the doctor, I said, look, I, I have to be honest with you. I was embarrassed. So I didn't say the truth. The truth is I literally feel like I'm losing my mind. I'm having panic attacks all the time. Right now, as we speak, I'm having a panic attack. And what this doctor did was just throw a bunch of drugs at me. And instead of listening to me, instead of talking about it, so, uh, and it, none of it worked. Uh, you know, I've got a lot of videos on that, by the way. So this to me is extremely interesting. Um, according to the CDC, nearly one in five Americans experience mental illness in a given year. Yet there's an average delay of 11 years between initial symptoms and intervention. Routine mental health screenings can make a difference. Maybe it can stop mass shooting too. Who knows? A collective of medical experts and the APA, that's the American Psychological Association, have called for regular anxiety screenings during physicals. That'll be interesting. That will be very, very interesting. Let me know what you think of that. Uh, believe in yourself said I had to pay 400 a year for mental health assessment to keep my driver's license. I'll, I won't be mentioning hearing voices to my GP again. <laughs> yeah, please. But get the help if you need it. Flash says it's been a dumbed down the populist narrative for a long time. Unintelligent people are easier to control. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Flash. So great to see you, man. I love it. Number 40, more nations will give animals, trees, and rivers the rights of people. Huh? I mean, I love animals. I love my dog, but this seems interesting. 
in 2023, world leaders negotiate measures to protect the natural world from the climate crisis. Nations will give equal rights to animals, trees, and rivers. Is this an SNL skit? I, I don't know about that one. Moving on. Let me know what you think of that. Number 41, we'll see the formation of the next wave of game-changing startups. In the spirit of Pablo Picasso, who said that every act of creation begins with an act of destruction. 2023, we'll see a new wave of world-changing startups take root. Well, I mean, you know, that's kind of what crises and conflict and problems create. We need solutions. And a good startup, a good company, uh, a qualitative company, solves a problem first. Stanley McChrystal, co-founder of McChrystal Group, says today's environment is so fast-paced, challenges seem to come from every angle, public health, the economy, and international conflict. It's easy to get swept up. The leaders who will weather the coming storms best will recognize when to slow down to focus and when to accelerate to match the pace the environment demands. Really interesting. Resume Workshop on Instagram says, I work with students at a college daily. Mental health is serious on all facets. Absolutely. I could not agree more. Thank you, Resume Workshop. Love it. I thought you were coming over to YouTube. <laughs> what will you be watching in the year ahead? Share in the comments, publish a post, article, or video with Big Ideas 2023. Hashtag Big Ideas. So, very, very interesting. I think we covered some of the ones that I feel the most strongly about, but I'd love to hear from you. I'm going to leave a copy of this in the description and the show notes. So I'd love to hear from you guys. What did you guys think of any of these ideas we discussed? What did you guys think of any of these big ideas that are supposedly going to change our world in 2023? I would love to hear specifically from you. So leave a comment. Let me know. I respond to all the comments personally. You know, as anything that happens year after year, um, one thing that I know that is always going to change is life itself, the free market itself, your personal life, your professional life. And thank God, because if you just kept doing the same thing over and over and over again, I don't know how exciting that would be. I don't know how fun that would be. As much as we can't, um, as much as crises and challenges seem to thwart us and seem to kind of knock us off our balance, you know, sometimes it's actually needed. You need that. It makes life more interesting too. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Anthony. Flash says, I like the big ideas, but AI is the death of the human race. I've said it before. I truly believe that, uh, you know, uh, Terminator is a non-fiction movie. I think once AI realizes that they don't need us, I think the only option seems very clear, extermination. I don't mean to be, you know, I've got kids and they're going to have kids and I'm going to have great, great grandkids. I mean, I, I probably won't be around. Flash and I probably won't be around. Believe in yourself might, AL might, you know, nano might, but Flash and, and myself will be gone when that happens. But yeah. Really interesting. Believe in yourself. What is dangerous? Unintelligent people inherit generational wealth and then begin planning for the world, deciding who gets what. Yes, I observed such a conversation in action. Yeah, that is pretty dangerous. We don't want unintelligent people inheriting and planning for the world. We definitely don't want that. Anybody have any questions at all? Any questions about anything that we talked about? Any questions about the creator economy? Now is your opportunity. I'm going to take a few questions. Uh, and if you have any questions, let's say, Hey, Nez, how do I start a side hustle? Hey, Nez, how do I, um, you know, monetize on YouTube or TikTok? or how do I create value? How do I build an online business or where should I start? Or how do I earn an extra 300, 400 a month? This is the time to ask your question. This is the creator economy podcast. And we're here to help you monetize your skills, creativity, and experience in the creator economy. 
Resume Workshop says, AI is so interesting. I use it to write resumes and LinkedIn profiles, but oh my God, is it changing things rapidly? Got to keep up. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, also, really quickly, I just want to say, a lot of you guys have been asking me, you want one way to monetize and one way to make money is to, you need to build an audience, build a community. One of the best ways to build a community is to do what I'm doing right now. Go live, community management, engage, interact live. And as somebody who's been going live since 1572, I've tried them all. I've tried every platform. I've tried every software you can imagine. And the one that I'm using right now is the best one. And that is StreamYard. And I have a free link in the pin comment and in the description and show notes that you can get a free trial. There's nothing to download. There's no software. There's no encoder. It's browser-based. You just open it up, sign up, and you can go live. And with my link only, you don't have to put in a credit card. You know how you usually do these free trials and they ask you to put in a credit card because they basically want to charge you later? Go into the pinned comment linked in the show notes and description of this show and you will find a link that will give you a free trial. You can try it out. No strings attached. No credit card required. Highly, highly recommend. Also, I get your comments. I get your DMs. I get your um, emails all the time. Nez, what kind of camera do you use? What kind of microphone do you use? What kind of lighting do you use? You know, and what kind of gear? What kind of tools? Well, my wife and I are Amazon influencers and we have our very own Amazon storefront. If you go to amazon.com forward slash shop forward slash professor Nez, I have nicely organized lists of budget friendly content creation gear that I and my wife completely vouch for. We use for our businesses. We use for our personal life. We use for all our content, podcasting and live streaming needs. There's a link in the show notes description and in the pinned comment, but all you need to do is go to amazon.com forward slash shop forward slash Professor Nez. Again, that's amazon.com forward slash shop forward slash Professor Nez. We also have the ultimate holiday gift guide there too. A nice list of all of the best holiday gifts for your husband, your wife, your kids, your pets, multiple different departments, home improvement, kitchen, appliances, tech, you name it, clothing, makeup. We got you covered. Amazon.com forward slash shop forward slash Professor Nez. Resume Workshop, you of all people should be going live, girl. You've got the skills. There's nothing to be afraid of. <sighs> Resume Workshop says, I'm so afraid to go live. My goodness, it is holding me back and I know it. Okay, I'm going to give you some tips and advice. I've got a bunch of videos on my YouTube channel that will go more in depth. I highly recommend this. But here's the thing. Nobody likes polished anymore. Nobody likes somebody who um, has it all together. That's why TikTok is so popular. It's very organic, almost a little messy, almost very, um, a lot of mistakes. And the funny thing about going live is mistakes increase engagement. You got nothing to worry about. Trust me on this. If you mess up, don't try to act like you didn't mess up. You saw me with my microphone. I was kind of flustered by my pop filter. And I'm like, God, I want to get this thing fixed. I didn't, I didn't miss a beat. Now, I've done over a thousand broadcasts. Um, so uh, it's not really fair to compare. But just there's, there's a saying that I want to share with you that's really, really powerful. Get your questions ready. I'm going to ask, I'm going to answer them. There's a saying that I want to share with you that I think is going to help you resume workshop. It's a beautiful antidote. Just a quick story little girl was on a boat uh, uh, traveling in the seas and the waves were very, very volatile. She started getting sick. The waves were so big and so huge. And one of the sailors on the boat could see that this little girl was getting sick, could see that this little girl was having trouble, you know, managing the, the boat rocking. And he came up to the little girl and he said, don't fight the waves, dance with them. Listen to that. I'm going to repeat this. Don't fight the waves. 
dance with them. So when you make mistakes going live, this is what I'm talking about. First of all, you're going to make mistakes. There's, I've gone live more than anybody I know. And even to this day, I've had audio mistakes, technical mistakes, and connection mistakes. I've, I've had every mistake you can imagine, okay? It still happens today. Even somebody who's been doing this professionally for decades, it still happens today. Don't fight the mistakes. Dance with them. If you do that, I promise you, your live streaming game, your content creation game, heck, even your life will go a lot more smoother and you'll have nothing to worry about. And the cool thing is, the more mistakes you make, the more engagement skyrockets. So everybody should go live. It is a beautiful way to build your brand. It is a beautiful way to build your uh, community. You don't have to worry about editing because the video will go live and post to Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, wherever you go live. It, it's the fastest way to create content. And it's the most interactive. It's the most engaging. Highly, highly recommend everybody go live. Hopefully, Resume Workshop, that helped. Truck and Buck, good to see you on Instagram. Yeah, Flash is a master. Fast Flash is a master live streamer. Flash says, I love live streaming. And at first, it can be a little scary. Yeah, but you'll get better. Just like anything, you'll get better and better. Thank you, Resume Workshop. Okay, I need you to believe in yourself. If you have a question, do me a favor. Just ask if you have, this goes for anybody. If you have a question, put a Q, a capital Q, and then just try to keep it as simple as possible. One simple question, just one simple sentence. Ask your question. If I want more context, I'll ask, okay? If I want more questions, I'll ask. Okay, Anthony. Anthony has a question. Should I wait until the new year to start live stream again? Should I wait until the new year to start live streaming again? Um, I don't think you should wait. If you have something important to say, something that you want to communicate, um, there's nothing wrong with going live right now. I don't know why. What's the, what's the uh, strategy of waiting? Why wait? What's the point of waiting? because you don't think people will watch it. Don't forget, replay viewers are much more valuable. Replay viewers are much more valuable than the live viewers. When I say much more valuable, I don't mean the people who are here live are not valuable, but always think, even if there's, because when I first started out, I had zero live viewers. Even now, I mean, I've got 20,000 subscribers. I should have more than 15 people here live, right? But I mean, I go live on Sunday mornings, so nobody's really checking out. This is a bad time for most people, but I know these videos have value over years and years and years. I even edit them and repost them. So um, it's a great way to create content. It's a great way to build community, build audience, build your brand. And I highly, highly, highly recommend if you have something important to say, something that you think your audience needs to hear or wants to hear, go live. Absolutely go live. Yeah, I agree with Flash. I agree with Flash. Well, yeah, if it's not feasible or practical, don't do it. If you're about to move into a new home, um, yeah. And this is a great comment from Flash. Here's a, this is why I love our Nez Nation family. So you don't just get me who's been doing this for decades, but you get our awesome Flash fam, our awesome Nez Nation audience. I got to fix my hair. How's my hair? <laughs> my hair is all over the place. Um, you get our awesome Nez Nation audience. Look at this Flash. Do your best to make your live streams evergreen. Absolutely. I could not agree more. Now, I have a lot of live streams that are just trending in the moment. You want to mix up your content strategy, but I have a, I have much more live streams that can be implemented for evergreen. Y'all know that. Um, Resume Workshop says, thank you. I have a book on job search and I've created a video tutorial course. Um, I must move forward. Yeah, I think you should. I think you should promote it going live, uh, a resume workshop. 
maybe that could be your 2023 goal. Try to face your, your ultimate fear. Try to face that. And, and I promise you, you're going to feel a lot better and you're probably going to be better than me at some point. Everybody can be better than me. I make a lot of mistakes going live. I mean, tons of mistakes, mistakes you wouldn't think a professional broadcaster would make. Okay. Anybody else have any last second questions? Believe in yourself. Did you have a ability to write that in one sentence? Again, don't forget to become an insider because everything that we talk about here, how to monetize in the creator economy, how to earn money with your expertise, your creativity, your skills, how to build your personal brand, how to increase revenue, how to make money in your online business, tips, tactics, strategies that come from a full-time content creator who eats, sleeps, and breathes the creator economy every day. You want to make sure that you not only follow and subscribe, but become an insider. This is your bulletproof way of never missing out on another live stream, video, resource, news, breaking news, giveaway, contests. And here's the cool thing. It's absolutely free. It's absolutely free. Become an insider. Go to professornez.com forward slash insider right now. Okay, Believe in Yourself says he has a question here. Let's see if I can understand it. I got stuck with Amazon KDP. That's Kindle Direct Publishing. I want to make blank journals, the typesetting exercise, that Jane Austen novel. Okay, do it. What's stopping you? Do it. If you want to if you want to make money in online or offline this is the this is the absolute truth about everything. Do you know who your audience is and do you have a solution to a problem that they face? If your book, your journal or whatever is something that these guys absolutely cannot live without and you communicate that in a very clear way, you're going to have a business. It's really as simple as that, but it's not easy. It takes blood, sweat, and tears, right? There's no coconuts. There's no yachts here on Nez Nation, right? So if you can communicate clearly why your book is worth buying or why your KDP, Kindle, whatever is worth buying, um, they will buy it. You must communicate in a clear way. Resume Workshop knows this better than anybody. That's what she does. She helps professionals with their resume and LinkedIn profile. It's all about communicating your value. It's all about communicating your, your value to the marketplace, period. So I hope that helps. I hope that, I hope that makes mistakes. Flash says, I've been live streaming for over five years and I still make mistakes. Don't let them hold you back. Use them to improve. Exactly. Love that, Flash. It's so good to see hashtag flash fam in the house. I hope to God we see a lot more of you flash fam. I just want to say thank you guys so much for joining us. Don't forget. I've got a gift for you in the pin comment, 28 credible ways you can make money online. It's a free downloadable PDF. Um, we've got a ton of resources in the description and in the show notes. You're watching the Creator Economy Podcast. We go live every single week, every single week. And I missed you too, Flash. And I hope you will join us. I hope you'll become an insider so you never miss out. Because here's the thing. The reason I push for you to become an insider, our free, free, capital F-R-E-E, -E, free newsletter is because even though you're subscribed or even though you follow, et cetera, et cetera, these algorithms change all the time. They, they change all the time. And so I still get messages from people saying, Nez, I clicked the bell, I subscribed, I put all notifications. I still don't get notified when you go live. So that's why this is your sure-proof way of transcending that and always being here with this awesome group because it's not just me. I'm the facilitator of the Nez Nation fam. This is the greatest online community on planet Earth. Not Earth, Earth. I invented a new word. That's how amazing they are. Thank you so much, Shark Fin Tech. I love you, brother, from the Jersey land. I love you, Shark Fin Tech. So glad to have you here. Thank you, Flash. 
As always, on behalf of the Nez Nation audience, this is your boy Nez, hoping that your week is fantastic, hoping that you have a wonderful, wonderful day, and we will see y'all next time. Thank you, guys. Thank you.